Hey everybody, we're back again with the uh, interview. We have uh, Igor Karash here, uh, Brian Alessandro, and we have Michael here. <laughs> uh, and uh, we're going to be here today talking uh, about uh, A Boy's Own Story, which is a comic that uh, I read, which kind of caught me by surprise, guys. I, I wasn't, this is this is not necessarily something that I would have picked up off the shelf if I seen it, but I'm glad I did read it because it was definitely an insight into so into a world that I had no no clue about. Hmm. Um, but uh, before we get into that, uh, just give us a quick uh, breakdown of uh, each of your roles on, on, on the book here. Brian, go ahead. So I uh, I was the co-adapter along with me, Michael. Along with Michael, mm -hmm. and I was artist illustrator. And a little bit of you know taking care of design look of the book. <laughs> yeah, it looks amazing. It yeah. <laughs> looks yeah. looks really 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 good. Yeah, we're so happy with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what you know going into this, I, I realized this was uh, you guys had picked it back up. It was ad adapted again, and you guys gave it a little bit of a, a, rev a revision, uh, revised it a bit. Uh, what made you want to go back and and pick this back up uh, so the new fans could see it? Started with Michael. Michael, do you want to get the ball rolling on that? Oh, uh, uh, well, the uh, the graphic novel is based on the novel 40 years ago called A Boy's Own Story. And I'm married to the author, Edmund White. So it's called Edmund White's A Boy's Own Story, colon, a graphic, the graphic novel. And um, it actually, none of the three of us you see on the screen had the idea. The idea was... Uh, hatched by ryan runstadler who is creative closure right creative closure he's he's mm -hmm. our producer and editor and editor he worked as an editor in many ways but he had he had access to uh the actual publisher who would bring it about but i mean there's so many entities involved in it it took that because it was uh Brian, help me. It was, it was yeah, a really I mean, big. It was a big effort because of it, the heavy illustration, full color. Um, well, yeah, a lot. Of I, it was. It would never would have been my idea because I've never, ever done anything like a graphic novel, and I I can't draw, so <laughs> yeah. And it it took us five years because the first whole year was just trying to get the rights from Penguin Random House to do it. Then the entire second year was lost because we went to we went through three other illustrators who had been committed to the project, but for one reason or another left. But we and already had the I, script. We already had. We, the we already had the script, and then we met Igor in the summer of 2019, and I think it was our great fortune because he's such a brilliant artist. Um, you know, I think it worked out the way it worked out because we were we were meant to work with Igor. So I'm really grateful that yeah. those other artists didn't work out, Igor. <laughs> yeah, me too. Because you yeah. know. I felt, you know, when I got familiar with script and original novel, definitely when we were able to kind of talk about it, I thought, you know, my one of first thoughts were that this project needed somebody with a little more kind of conceptual skill and you know, capabilities of making things probably a little bit deeper than normally in comic books things are developed. You know, it's pretty serious novel. And the way script was established, it also has a, so a lot of nuances, a lot of pain, a lot of love, a lot of things that pretty complex. And plus, uh, Brian, uh, and Michael, you know, mostly Brian, as I learned, he came up with this idea of time lapses. And so a lot of things that need, you know, made that script pretty complex. And I'm glad, and I love complex projects. <laughs> so yeah, same. Uh, yeah, your, your style evolved from the beginning when you originally conceived what it might look like, Igor. Yeah, it was a little bit of evolution. You know, nothing comes from nothing. So I started pretty close to what my thinking was, but still it was a little bit more in a, you know, taking some things from popular culture because, you know, I never done actually truly like large graphic novel. I've done some, you know, smaller projects, but never 
you know, I've done a lot of illustrated books, you know, classics and uh, modern uh, literature, but never graphic novel where the whole narrative it comes out as graphics or basically illustration. Right. So that was a challenge for me, but, uh, you know, that's kind of, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty happy uh, with final look and how it came out with all the production and a lot of things that I learned from many different points of view, you know, about gay community and culture and all the, you know, you know, this kind of drama and that's that's right. If, not to cut you off, Igor, but for people who don't know, you know, Michael and I are gay. Igor is not; yeah. he's straight. And this was, I think, a real education for you into the history and yeah. the culture yeah. and the community. Of the I mean, community. I, yeah. yeah, I think I came kind of prepared. I live, you know, I was born in a different country where, you know, being gay would be equal to be, you know, commit a crime. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about Soviet Union. But, you know, I live in the States for more than 25 years, so I kind of <laughs> came prepared. Yeah. Right. A lot yeah. of, you know, my first supervisor here in the States was gay. So I kind of, I learned <laughs> a lot of things and I had a lot of friends and, you know, never had a problem with it. It just, you know, when you're not experiencing it firsthand, it's kind of harder to put yourself in that world. But this book definitely uh, put me into that uh, deeper kind of senses. Uh, talk, talking about the, you know, the story of the book, like I said, I'm you know, able to give it a chance to read it um, before, you know, hit shelves and everything like that. Um, and like I said, this normally wouldn't be like, if I'm in a comic book shop, I'm like, ah, this probably wouldn't be something that I, I grabbed because, you know, I'm, I'm comics, you know, I'm that, you know, Marvel, DC, you know, I, I don't Superheroes, yeah. <laughs> right. I don't typically yeah. veer off until like uh, your, your, your normal third party or your independent. Um, but this this has definitely opened up my my mind a little bit more to what else comics could possibly do and the stories that it can tell. And I, I wasn't necessarily prepared to get into the, you know, the world of what it's like to kind of explore your sexuality and like what it is to be uh, gay and still trying to figure that out and like throughout your life. And, you know, as I'm reading this, you know, I could definitely tell that there was a lot of personal experience in, in, in this book and, you know, the, the humanizing of the character, like, you know, he, he's still trying to figure it out as he goes along and, and, and figure yeah. out examples from other people. But I, I guess as, you know, this, like you said, this was already like a story that was already written. What were like some of the, um, examples or like real life stories that were used to for, for this story. Michael, can I can I just say one thing real fast before you start? Sure. Just as a, just as a context. So, mm. Michael uh, Edmund White is Michael's husband, uh, mm. and he's Edmund and Michael are my friends, and I've known them for about six years. Um, you know, this novel is I guess we would call it auto fiction. It's a novel, but it's very autobiographical. So he drew right. heavily from his life. And because I know Ed so well, and because he's always talking about his life and his experiences, to Igor's point, I did integrate a lot of flash forwards, as you mm -hmm. saw when you read the book, of, of Ed, of Eddie, in his 20s, 30s, and 40s, through the 60s, right. 70s, it and took 80s. took me a minute to catch on to what was going on there. <laughs> yeah, we do some sort of flash forwards. Yeah. And, and we deal with like Stonewall and gay liberation. We deal with the AIDS epidemic of the 80s. Yeah. Um, and we deal with Ed in New York. We deal with Ed in Paris uh, as an adult, looking back on his youth. Um, but to that point, then, Michael, go ahead, because you know Ed, obviously, infinitely better than I do. Well, I want to I want to build on that is to, mm -hmm. and to say that what the graphic novel version of the of the original novel published 40 years ago is an enhanced version of the original author's life. In other words, the original novel takes place in just a few years, uh, basically the 50s, when uh, our character Eddie, we gave him the name. He doesn't have a name in the original novel. Was growing up, uh, but the idea that that the graphic novel uh, encompasses is to get the entire life of someone who um, a lot of people, but not everybody on the planet, consider a kind of hero. Um, and it's not something that he would say necessarily himself, but. Um, 
it, we wanted to get the whole life because it's interesting. So, so now it's considered in like Amazon listings, um, historical or biographical fiction. Mm -hmm. So there's that. I don't know if I've answered the full question. Mm -hmm. for, for, for me or from 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 Brian? <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. But it's it, it's it's the original novel with illustrations plus more story. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's, and, and like you said, you were talking about the the, the character Eddie. We 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 see like his relationship with his father, with his mother. Um, they they go into the, the stories about how you know there was always talk about you know if you were raised by women then automatically you know not automatically but then you were you know going to be gay based on that that perspective and stuff like that and they, yeah. they yeah. get a lot of explanation that that's yeah. absolutely not the case at all right. uh, and it's just so many different you know as you enter this world of of so many people that you know if if you go from like city to city like you have people that are more comfortable with just being out and about about it and then mm -hmm. you know you have this kid who you know who was trying to imitate his father or you know be someone like his father you know and try to you know figure out a way to kind of live in between both of these worlds mm -hmm. uh and, and, and you get a lot of that there and, and by the way the the artwork is just you know i don't know if that was just hand painted or it, it looks really really good like yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. thank god for it thank god for it you know, i'm traditionally trained uh, illustrator, artist, and basically, you know, look at my age, especially in a country where I came from, we didn't have to use any computers. But uh, little by little with new technology, you see the whole work uh, was done on this. Tablet. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it's a, so it's a digital painting, I would say, but uh, done with using, you know, similar techniques that I would use do your know, gouache painting or tempera or acrylic where I with you have just I know painting pretty well so I I'm able to use this uh digital technique to just advance me in, in terms of timing because you know imagine paint when it's 260 wow. <laughs> pages yeah. with a lot of them have five six frames so it's a <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. took up it took up so much of the creative time. And the other thing I wanted to say, Terrell, is yeah. that we got the bulk of the work done during the pandemic, and we yes. never saw each other. We did it all so virtually. <laughs> it was a collaboration that um, we didn't always talk to Igor because he was off finishing other things. Um, and it's not, it's not, it's true to the original story in that it tells the entire original story, but then it's enhanced. So there's plus. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, there were a lot of, there were a lot of meetings talking about, well, how much of that can we justify? Uh, and Igor would create illustrations. I'm not, I don't, I, I, I haven't gone back to compare to the original script, but he would create illustrations that would be essential but i did i myself couldn't always see how we would incorporate that into the story so we would dig back into the original text of the novel from 1982 and try to find lines that would complement it yeah mm -hmm. as yeah. a kind of you know a kind of adhesion mm -hmm. uh, what i really enjoy with, about this process first of all it was like super smooth and you know, we never met before, didn't know each other, and it was totally, you know, came out of blue, the whole thing, project. I was really kind of, you know, considered my lucky moment to meet such a great creative people, first of all, and plus, you know, the, you know, much trust and kind of energy synergy that they invest in, in me. So it was really amazing process creative and and also you know i also enjoy the part that they gave me a little more creative freedom uh kind of invest my time and in thinking into not in the script but how to make it you know more most effective and sometimes you know some you know i kind of like surreally and actually script has some surreal kind of elements in it mm -hmm. and uh i sometimes would inspired by something that i read in original novel 
or some memories or some kind of things I see here in Midwest. And I would incorporate it in an illustration. And both Ryan and Michael, they were, oh, yeah, yeah this is perfect. <laughs> I would be right. surprised right. Right. how easy it was to, you know, let them kind of, you know, kind of figure out how to include something that came in my mind to some kind of fruition. So it, really, it was kind of like a conversation. Yeah. Right? It was kind of like a, like we would write the script, give it to Igor, he would draw, show us the drawings, and then that would jar something in our minds. Yeah. And then we would tweak it or adapt it to his drawings, kick yeah. it back to him. And before you know, it became its own thing, really. Right. But the, 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 there was the fourth element was Ryan Runstadler. Yeah. Because yeah. So he was, he was like the ringmaster. He was, we weren't usually in communication with Igor uh, under pain of a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan was the one who was in communication. He, he was the air traffic controller. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, I was and it was probably best that way because I think we might have gotten confused or confused one another. Mm -hmm. uh, we might, it, it, the process might have been even slower. We, it was two years ago when we were thinking, is it going to be out by Christmas? This was two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Not going to yeah. be out by Christmas. It's going to be in time for Comic Con 1926. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why is now uh, the perfect time that you guys want to release it? Like I said, after, you know, for so long and you've been working on this for so long, why? Why is we, now the, the, the time we just, for it? We just got it done, but we just finished it in June. So oh, yeah. <laughs> we had no choice. <laughs> but also, no, but the timing is fortuitous because this is the 40th anniversary this year ah. of the original yeah. book. So yeah. it kind of worked out. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Actually, there's a lot of harmonic convergence going yeah. on there that yeah. was not really foreseen. Yeah. I guess I guess love, love it when it works out like that. Yeah. 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 Um, I read, I saw, of course, like, you know, I always read the forward on books and stuff like that. And one of the things you guys mentioned is it's going to be a lot of sex in the book. Right? <laughs> yeah. It definitely, it definitely delivers, like, you know, very detailed and the artwork there, Igor. Uh, yeah, we didn't yeah. shy away from those elements. Yeah. What, uh, <laughs> I mean, I would, would really want to, I mean, obviously, you could have taken stuff out, you could have added more, whatever you wanted. Yeah. What really wanted you, like, focus in on that a little bit more like you wanted the the audience to see kind of like the the main character's like perspective of like what was going on or just his his viewpoint of what sex was for me it was both psychological and also political i mean psychological because i wanted to capture the phenomenology of this young man experiencing lust and love for the first time right. political because we see so many movies and books and, and art pieces that depict um you know budding first time, you know, adolescent love and sex that's straight, but somehow we don't usually see it when it's dealing with two gay characters. I feel like the filmmakers or the writers tend to shy away from it for fear that it's going to offend somebody. But as a gay person, I find nothing offensive about that. Yeah. So I wanted to just show it as it really is or was for this character. And yeah. My favorite, yeah. So when, when, when you mentioned that just now, like the you know way the filmmakers like per, portray that on screen, like is it, would that be like the same for you as seeing like I guess two two I guess heterosexual people on screen? Is like is it that same same effect for for you? For me personally, um, I mean I, artistically, I think it's it should be on a parody with each other. It shouldn't okay. be something that yeah. I mean I feel like we should not shy away from any kind of honest, realistic, yeah, natural. Um, sexual experiences yeah. whether it be lust based or love based it's you know we're all animals <laughs> and we all experience the same thing but yeah. sometimes for different types of people so right and revolutionary you know kind of nature oh you froze igor froze. yeah a little bit <laughs> <laughs> well, the 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 weather system is moving through missouri <laughs> yes uh, yeah uh, original novels had this kind of brutality and honesty about adolescence you know personal sexual life and basically story builds around this and you, the great thing about it it's not becoming pornography but it's really right. where it needed for the story and my take on it because in the beginning when i was just introduced to the project and uh you know ryan told me um you know this book has a lot of you know uh, 
sexual openness and uh, scenes and all that. And I told them like, if there's story, I don't really have a problem. I, right. You know, I only think that I don't want to publish, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, something that the only purpose to be some kind of, you know, just relation, sex yeah. relation. But uh, but then I you know read the book and I felt like yeah this all this scenery needs to be in the book because it's part of the story. Again, uh, I just want to emphasize that even though the sex can be explicitly described or suggested in the original novel, the original novel doesn't have visuals, and we yeah. have visuals, and. That's why it's called a graphic novel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, but, but, but we're talking about the life of someone who was revolutionary, who was yes. at, at the Stonewall riots and who was at the forefront of trying to figure out the, the AIDS crisis when it happened and who was on the original Gay Men's Health Crisis board, yes. which is across yes. the street from yeah. where I live right now, yeah. the original place where it began. And so we brought it. We brought it forward into to history, the historical aspect, and sex is part of that. I mean, let me just tell you, Terrell, that I live in New York City, and the pandemic happened. And everybody's like, "Oh, I'm I'm so tired. I'm so lonely, and uh, I don't know what people look like." And, you know that kind of stuff. <laughs> and now, now they're all just fucking left and right. I mean, they're doing sex. They never. They just invented certain kinds of sex. Right. And that's what happened. That's what happened in the seventies. The, the you know the apotheosis of the gay revolution was the seventies, right. where mm -hmm. everything was being happening and tried and so on. And Brian was quite uh, astute in saying, "Well, let's just like take a gamble because it is a gamble." And um, I put some of that in it. What happened 30 years after the original story, A Boy's Own Story, uh, uh, is set. I'm sorry, that's a long winded way of saying <laughs> we really wanted it to take in a much larger scope, right. yes. which is highly sexual, highly sexual. And like, like, like I say, like Igor was saying, it didn't, it didn't come off as, as pornographic at all. It, it, yeah. If anything, it was super educational. Um, and, and just a, a really great insight into this character's, you know, mindset of, or this viewpoint yeah. of of the world, and you know, yeah. just somebody just trying to live their life and figure shit out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, as basically what it would it would. Yeah, it yeah. We were basic. looking for ways to do it, not like extremely realistic and anatomical, but with support of, you know, certain aesthetics and uh, certain realism, but uh, without getting into you know kind of gratuitous gratuitous it's, it's never gratuitous right yeah, yeah that's what it is it's, it's, uh, is, it, is, it, is know, it any like blowback from your publisher like nah we we not doing that like uh, no they were really supportive really brave you know, and supportive uh, i can tell you one one only thing i have to change is cover because uh, oh yes on our genitals regional, genitals, uh, genitals yeah, yeah. It was you see where that guy is painting uh, with yeah. a roll of glue or whatever, putting this advertising board on. There uh -huh. was a little penis, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to paint over it. And, yeah. and so yeah. and then basically cover was ready, but then publishers came with you know what we find with everything what's inside. But on your cover, you have to come up with some kind of way to cover that part <laughs> and i thought that was clever right. Igor, having the, yeah, the painter the billboard painter painting over him yeah. that's sticking out and mm -hmm. suggesting and the, and the book is wrapped in plastic yeah and yeah. it's wrapped in plastic so it's not like they could pick it up and start thumbing through it oh, um okay. but we do you know all that said we really do secretly hope that we get banned and burned because it's really good for sales. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's as you know, it's it's been helping the graphic novel industry tremendously. Will all be, these uh, will people the in Texas see this? Will people in Texas see this? Well, this is the internet, so people all over the world will see. It. I have a lot of relatives in Texas, and I'll send. It. <laughs> Brian, I'm I'm really glad that you cleared up that whole like time thing because like as I'm as I was reading the book, 
And I'm like, who the hell is this guy just in the background of every scene? And it took me a second to figure out, okay, this is like the future version of him, like looking at himself. I'm like, yeah. okay, maybe it's just like some guy that's just been around. So, like, but just used like, to that now, Terrell, because all <laughs> TV is about time travel now. Oh, well, that's true. Goodness. But no, <laughs> but what's what's I should I want to say one thing is you know, Ed wrote a very famous biography about Marcel Proust. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to kind of put that in as a nod to the sort of Proustian exploration of the past, where you have the adult version of a character literally walking through scenes and inhabiting space with his younger self, right. watching his memories unfold. Yeah, and at first it's a little jarring and surreal and weird, but eventually you get it. And I think that's the gamble part is, you know, we're taking a creative risk with people understanding what we're trying to do. And I think by the end, you certainly do get it. They might struggle in the beginning, but it eventually, you know, becomes clear. Brian and, by trade is a psychologist. So yeah. he taught, he taught yeah. psychology in Arizona at Pima yeah. College. And, um, and, and I think from the beginning, when Brian and I first met almost six years ago, we like to talk in terms of psychology we're not really highly political people, I don't think. I think Igor is more political than we are. Igor well, is I'm now going known. To pay attention to certain aspects: war in Ukraine, uh, sure. right, right. and yeah. but not so much. Uh, I believe in America, and kind of I'm somewhere in between. Not so much on the right, or not so much on the left. Right. But, uh, We're happy. Yeah. So do we. That's why we wrote this. We believe in America. Well, yeah, and I also, you know, coming at it from the perspective of a psychologist and a storyteller, I just wanted to tell a really deep, complex, honest story about about a person and about a society. And I think we, we all really did accomplish that. And the society that's depicted the 50s in the Midwest so resembles in many ways what's happening now, yeah. except, except now people are dumber. <laughs> I mean, just fucking dumb. Like, shit. Yeah, that's true. Just dumber than a box of rocks. Yeah, I mean, they dumb. Have... Yeah, they, they used to go to the library. <laughs> like, yeah, we're not reading so much anymore, which is painful. And we're regressing. Yes. <laughs> I, I guess my, my last, my last question here. We, you know, wrap it up, but. uh what it would uh, like? What is what is your guys' expectation for? Like I said, new readers to get out of this. What do you? How, what do you want this to? I guess I mean, like I said, it's already an established story. But what do you want with your revised work on it to re to say to a new audience? Whatever you are, don't be ashamed of yourself. Yes. Yeah. And and also, you know, we were hoping also that it brings a new generation of readers to Edmund White's work. He has 30 books. He's been writing for 50 years. He's a tremendous author. And, um, you know, he, he deserves a larger audience. But to Michael's point also, um, yes, in the 1950s, it seemed like it was much harder to come out. And it probably was in certain circles. But it's still really frightening and very dangerous for a lot of people to come out of the closet, even today in certain parts. Especially of the in certain parts. Yeah. Especially in certain parts of the state. I mean, I live in New York. I live in New Jersey, but I'm from New York City. New York City is very progressive, but there are parts of New York State, or even the outer boroughs, that are terrifying and very right. dangerous because right. there's a lot of bigots. So we can't take anything for granted. It might seem easier because the news is making it seem like it's easier, but I don't think that's the reality for a lot of people around. The I'm world. from the South, and my drag name is Trailer Swift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my hope, actually, besides the socioeconomics and uh, gayness and you know, sexual identity. I mean, I think, you know, what I was struck by, I mean, this, your know, original novel is great. You know, besides everything, all important points we made, it's great literature. And my you are always hope, respectful of that too. Yeah, yes. it's a absolutely wonderful, you know, language and, you know, the way things are expressed, it's an amazing piece. And I was personally, you know, we all were trying to kind of give that um, some kind of respect with this um, new version of um, uh, kind of give a nice cloth, <laughs> nice look that respectful to original novel. And I, my hope that people will appreciate that. Uh, it's a, it's, for me, it's a great privilege, a great, great privilege. And the fact that it turned out so beautifully is kind of astounding. If it, if it had not turned out so beautifully, I think it would be less of a privilege. 
but it went beyond expectations. Oh yes, for sure. Yeah. Yep. And it exceeded my expectations. And Igor Igor met the challenge, the you know, the erotic and the and, and the, the time and the place, everything. Oh, thank you. <laughs> like beyond my expectations. I second that. Yes. Uh, and we're and, and and we're just happy for people to be looking at it and reading it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, see, we don't know. Uh, I mean, it's hard. You know, it's almost like your baby or whatever. You know, product that mm -hmm. you can't look at at it from somebody's perspective. We don't know. Uh, one right. prominent artist, John Hendricks, who actually creates a lot of you know, editorial illustration and comics and books. He's author, illustrator. When he saw this, he said like, I never seen graphic <laughs> novel made like this. It looks like Edward Hopper. With yeah, yeah. Comic yeah. Book. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And and great. Alison Bechtel said the same yeah. thing. Alison yeah. Bechtel said, yeah, same thing. So uh, I, I, I'm not afraid of huge, grandma, you know, grandiose projects and I kind of, take on that and trying to make make it work somehow but yeah yeah it's hard for me to judge <laughs> yeah terrell are you an artist what is that behind you it's so beautiful oh it's uh one beautiful. one piece like manga is anime <laughs> that you did no 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 oh this, i say yes. something you purchased <laughs> i am not purchased artist. yeah yes, <laughs> Uh, I find it interesting too. Uh, the 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 way you guys frame the book, the cover, it's almost as like a children's book, like a, like a like a book. The way you framed it like that, but it's clearly more adult centric. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you have it framed like a yeah. The way yeah. you know the, the side to side cover usually like you have the the yeah yeah <laughs> usually wow. top down uh, yeah. as far as like normal comic stuff like that. But you guys have it almost like a, a comic strip. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's really, 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 really cool where you guys did that. It's like a nod to that type of uh, yeah. art. Yeah. I mean, it's probably because of the, the time period as well. That, yeah, like, the 50s. Yeah. yeah, like 75% yeah, of the book takes place in the 50s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, uh, it, this is an amazing story. I, I'm glad I had the opportunity to read it. Every Eagle, Brian, everybody did an amazing job on this. Uh, this is definitely something that I would be recommending to everybody I know. Thank you. Um, Thank you, you know, Terrell. Get me a personal copy so I can share it with my wife. Yeah, and my yeah. We'll get um, that too. And like, like I said, I, at five years, I can't imagine you know working <laughs> on something for so long. The labor of love, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as as people in the industry, just working on something for so long and just ready to hear what the reception is, you know, sales and stuff like that 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 come with it. I mean, obviously, you guys can't really think about that because then you'd be freaking out about everything that you do, but. <laughs> It's, no, it's just it's, it's really an amazing book like i said it, it really it really pulled me in as, as soon as i started reading because like i did not know what to expect when i when i got it so well, thank you terrell thank you for can this I, thank you for having us on you, terrell can i ask you one question yeah <laughs> how did you find this book how it happened uh, <laughs> so it was it was it was given to me through uh i guess the the press relations the press publicist yeah laura yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Is, is it, man yeah. Can, do you like check it out and i was like you know i kind of like, eh. yeah. <laughs> was like yeah. i was like because i've been getting like a lot of comics through through the publication right. to to read and mm -hmm. this happened to be on my you know on the list and i was like okay and then they asked me you know if i wanted to do an interview and everything like that and I was like, sure. I mean, I I really liked it. I want, I, I definitely want to talk to you guys and see, you know, kind of pick your brain about, you know, the, the insight of what was going on. So, like I said, I'm glad I got an opportunity. I'm glad I didn't turn it down because it, it yeah. turned out to be very insightful into a world I had no no clue about. Well, we're so, glad too. Thank you for this. <laughs> That's very generous of you. Thank yeah, you. very generous. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I appreciate it. A Christmas thank miracle. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well guys i'm glad we got to do this Thanks, thank you Terrell. for taking the time to do this interview with me i really okay. appreciate you thank, thank you, you for, for having me read an amazing story and i hope the rest of the world gets to check out the uh a boy's own story as well okay right. thank thanks you so much bye-bye thanks, thanks, everyone thank you. Ciao. take care yeah. bye-bye bye, -bye. Bye. bye bye see <laughs>